Hello Rocketeers! I'll be honest, I'm sick of Mission to Argus, and something tells me you are too. So instead of the originally planned 4 remaining videos and a patch notes video, I've condensed it into 2 videos and a patch notes video, and hopefully I'll make some banger episodes. So instead of just looking at Priest cards in this video, today we'll be looking at all the cards for Priest, Warlock and Death Knight. Since there's gonna be so many cards, I'll only talk about the ones I feel need explanation. Let's dive into it with the cards for Priest. Argus serves as the battlefield between the forces of Light and Shadow, and Priest gets cards that are based on both of these factions. The first archetype for Priest is based around converting, or rather stealing enemy minions, with cards such as Lightforge Missionary, Reborn in the Light and Prophet of the Abyss. Prophet of the Abyss is a 2 mana 2-2 two, two minion that will allow you to look at 3 cards in your opponent's hand when played and then choose one. Once the Prophet dies, you'll then get a copy of the card you chose. There's also the legendary minion Sarah Lightmother. The light is your destiny. Sarah is a 4 mana 2-6 minion with Divine Shield. Sarah is in charge of converting others to the light and she will not take no for an answer. Sarah will allow you to target an enemy minion and at the start of your next turn you'll take control of it with plus two plus two. But if Sarah dies before that, the effect will be cancelled. Priest's other archetype this expansion is based all around shadow spells, with new cards such as Mind Shatter, Void Wing and Shifting Tome. Shifting Tome is a 5 mana shadow spell with lifesteal that will deal 3 damage and draw 3 cards. But Shifting Tome is a shifting spell, which means that its spell school can be changed. Once you cast a holy spell while Shifting Tome is in your hand, it will swap to a holy spell and will instead restore 6 health and draw 3 cards. If you cast a shadow spell, it will swap back. This shadow archetype is further supported by the legendary minion Lura Voidfallen. This 4 mana 6 2 minion has shadow spell damage plus 3 and a death rattle that will give Lura's abilities to a random friendly minion once she dies. This means that both the shadow spell damage and the death rattle will keep spreading as long as you have minions to receive the effects. Priest's last two cards are Light Mother's Gift and Mystic Constellation. Mystic Constellation is a 4 mana 1 6 minion with Retaliate 3 and can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Retaliate is the new keyword of Mission to Argus and characters with Retaliate will return bonus damage whenever they take damage from a living character aside from other Retaliate damage. In Mystic Constellation's case, it will return 3 damage. Now, let's look at the cards for Warlock. Warlock gets cards for two archetypes in Mission to Argus, a new Demon Warlock deck and similarly to Priest, a Shadow Spell based deck. For the Demon Warlock deck, Warlock gets the new minions Fellhound Runt and Tauron Acolyte and the spell Inconceivable. This new Demon deck would be built all around the new legendary minion Varimathras. Behold the might of the Nathrazim! Varimathras is a 4 mana 4 3 demon with rush. Upon death, he will go dormant, and after you summon one demon, he will awaken with plus one attack. But this effect increases each time. This means that the next time he dies, he would awaken after you summon two demons with plus two attack, and so on. For the Shadow Warlock archetype, Warlock gets the new shadow spells Dark Demise, Sealing Shadows, and Void Burst. Like the Priest card from before, Sealing Shadows also has the keyword Retaliate. The payoff for this archetype is the legendary minion Dimensius the All Devouring. I am the hunger of the void. Dimensius followed the X-52 rocket all the way from Netherstorm and has come to wreak havoc on Argus. Dimensions is a 7 mana 7 7 demon with a battle cry that will trigger if you've cast a shadow spell on each of your last 3 turns and then open a rift to the void. The rift to the void is summoned on the board but can't be interacted with and has an effect that will trigger upon the start of your turn and summon a 3 3 demon with rush and add a random shadow spell to your hand. Warlock also gets a spell that might start into both of these archetypes. 
Shifting Cosmos is a 5 mana fell spell that will summon a 6-6 six, six demon with taunt but will swap to a shadow spell in your hand once you cast a shadow spell. As a shadow spell, it will instead summon 2-3-3 three, three demons with rush. This card was showcased before and it was pointed out that the two abilities would make more sense to swap so this card will likely be changed in an upcoming patch notes video. The final card for Warlock is Felfin Cyborg. Now for the cards you've probably all been waiting for, Death Knight. Death Knight gets support for two archetypes, Rainbow Death Knight and Freeze Death Knight. For the Rainbow deck, Death Knight gets new single rune cards like Sanguine Cleave and Reckless Researcher. There's also the Blood Unholy spell Heart of Darkness. This 2 mana shadow spell will give your hero retaliate 1 until the start of your next turn and then give you a corpse whenever you retaliate for the duration of the spell. The payoff for this new rainbow deck is the return of the titan, Argus the Unmaker. All life ends. I always thought Argus should have been a death knight card so I finally made it happen. Argus is a 9 mana 12 12 legendary minion with a death rattle that will destroy your corpse pool. This means that you'll no longer be able to gain or use corpses. But Argus will also remove a card in your opponent's deck for each corpse you had in your pool. So it won't take much to completely destroy your opponent's deck. As you'd probably expect, the cards for the Freeze archetype are all Frost Rune, with new cards such as Antoran Frostbinder. Cold Snap and Interstellar Ice. This new free deck would be built all around the legendary minion, the Avatar of Entropy. Time to break the ice. The Avatar of Entropy is a 4 mana 4 3 elemental with 2 frost runes and a start of game effect that causes you to gain a corpse whenever you destroy a frozen enemy this game. The Age of Ice. This may seem like a conditionless start of game effect, but remember you need to destroy minions you'd usually be more inclined to leave alone and it essentially means that you get to trade a freeze effect for a corpse. The avatar of entropy also has a battle cry that will freeze all enemies. Death Knight also gets a new spell that might slot into both of these new archetypes, Absolute Zero. This form and a frost spell with a blood and frost rune will freeze all minions and deal 2 damage to them. Then, if you gain a corpse from any minion dying to this effect, Absolute Zero will be recast. And if you gain another corpse, it will be recast again, and so on. Something worth noting about this card is that if you're also running the Avatar of Entropy, this spell's effect could trigger entirely from enemy minions dying. The final card for Death Knight is an X-52 minion, X-52 Surveyor. This 2 mana 2-3 two, undead will allow you to look at the top 3 cards of your deck and then choose one to put on top. Then if it's a location, X-52 Surveyor will give it plus 1 durability. While Death Knight didn't get any new location in this expansion, they already have access to 3 locations in standard, 4 of you include my previous expansion and this expansion does also introduce 2 new neutral legendary locations that you can run one off. Well that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this slightly longer episode, if so, don't forget to hit the like button. And subscribe to the channel for more custom Hearthstone content. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at all the last cards for the expansion, the neutral cards. In the custom Hearthstone expansion, mission to Argus! Woo!